So I can't and I won't show you exactly the ranking of the, the offices on the cultural index because uh, it's not, the cultural index is not the end all be all and so I don't want people to grab onto that and say, oh my office has a poor culture and then we're, we're crappy and you know and all sorts of things. That's not the case. It's just, it's just a notional thing that's going on but I give you some demographics of these. So in terms of region, tornado, all in office history. So the, the top one third, this is the breakdown by region. Half are in Tornado Alley, half aren't. Uh, most of them are WSOs. 60%, um, 40% uh, were WFSOs. The middle, this is the breakdown. Less in Tornado Alley. About half, you know, here in this and then the bottom. Uh, so you can see some patterns here, but again, you couldn't point and say, Every WS, these are the best offices, or the ones in Tornado Alley are the best offices, or the southern region offices are the best offices. There's all pieces uh, to that puzzle. So uh, now in 2010, so it seems that the culture of a high performance is enduring, that in 2009, seven years after it was defined, the cultural index indi continues to be a good predictor of tornado warning performance at individual WFOs. Uh, high performance at the top one third of the WFOs in the culture index survived a major operations concept change. So you could say that the culture of high performance is also a culture of change management. They seem to at least handle that change uh, fine. Uh, key elements of this culture should apply not just for tornado warnings, but all sorts of tasks that are done in operational office and I would, I would posit in, in headquarters tasks as well. And so this is again a business case for non-technical training in a agency which is bread and butter is science and technology. So the why of you, the people part of the mission has a huge impact on the performance of the agency. So the questions that to me are still out there is that, you know, what degree does performance impact how people feel about their work environment and vice versa? In other words, is the, cult, is the culture a reflection of performance or the cause of it? Um, certainly there's some relationship, maybe a, a um, positive feedback loop, better performance leads to better, happier employees, better culture, builds on itself and maybe a negative feedback loop going in the other direction. <coughs> certainly reading Gary Fine's book, uh, looking at Chicago, uh, the Plainfield event had a huge, huge impact on, on that office. Uh, how does office culture change? So this is a question that, so the MICs, in fact, during the course of this study, a number of those offices had changes in MIC. So even though the, the leadership is important, it's not the end all be all. So the MIC can leave, uh, the SU can leave, the WCM can leave, somebody else can come in and the culture can remain uh, in place, um, and and how do you go about submit systematically, or can you systematically go about changing the culture of an office to improve performance, or any work group for that matter? Uh, it seems easier said than done. You know, well, we're now we're going to be performance oriented. Now we're going to have open communications. Now we're going to, you know, improve our union relationships. Now we're going to do this, but but it, it seems that uh, individuals within the office uh, have a uh, really important impact on to the degree to which the office changes or, do, uh, or doesn't. Gary Fine uh, posited that the, uh, the WSOs, since they were sort of like spin, these spin-up offices, they brought in forecasters, they, it was sort of like a, like a clean slate and it was easier to put in place a healthy culture at those offices than trying to change an ingrained culture in an office that, like Chicago, that has this big history and way of being. So perhaps the training was more effective, the, the next red 88D training, and that's why what was going on, that they, they sort of had that benefit a clean, of a clean slate. So um, with that, um, I'm done. And uh, any, any questions or, Liz? Um, in the slide that you showed backward in time and, and the current SFA and then forward in time, are your top 10, 15 offices, are those, are you tracking the same exact offices throughout that time period? Yes. So they're not changing? They're not changing. As far as their, their uh, POD scores, they're the top? They were the top at the, for the 2001, 
These are, these are in, in 2003, or 2002, those, these are the offices that, that scored the, the, the top third in the culture index on those three questions. So, and then, and this is the CSI at those offices from 1996 until today. And the same for the middle and the bottom third. And then these are the POD for the same three groups of offices and the, and the FAR for the same three groups of offices. Assuming they would have scored as high as they did in the SFA all those other years. That, 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 unfortunately, we don't have the benefit to do, to, of another SFA. The last one was 2002. We haven't done another one in 2002 to see if there's a recalibration needed. Um, yeah, I, don't, I would love to see that, but we don't have that data. But, so that's, that's, an, that's the question is, um, it, it would seem from that that, that the, the culture it captured here seemed to have been in place before and seems to be reasonably in place still with some modifications. Again, this is a, there, this is a collection of offices on any given season, every year, you know, things can happen. You can see in uh, 2006, there was a, you know, anomalously low year. This was a, I think uh, most of the activity was east of the Mississippi, the big outbreaks. It was a low year here in Oklahoma. Um, some of the uh, offices in Oklahoma, Texas are in, in the top uh, 13, or the top one third. So, yeah. Yeah, a couple of comments, I guess, and, and maybe some, some questions. Um, we did a five year study of tornado warnings, and we found the strongest indicator was the number of outbreaks for that WFO. And I guess one question is you excluded the sites. WFOs with fewer than, was it five tornadoes during the two year period or was it? Yes. And I would, I think that's a little low. And I would guess that a lot of your lowest third are probably those WFOs with five to 10 tornadoes during that, during a year or during a two year period. And I'd like to see this repeated with only those WFOs with say 10 or maybe even 20 tornadoes during a two year period. I'm just sort of curious how that would turn out. My other sort of comment is, I think it was the third or fourth slide from the end, it, you had uh, the WFO separated by like Tornado Alley versus non-Tornado Alley. And it sort of reiterated what I was thinking in that my guess is, you, as, a, as a meteorologist, I'm excited about tornadoes, and so if I was working for the Weather Service, I'd want to work in Tornado Alley. And so my theory would be that Tornado, tornado Alley sort of attracts the better employees. And so my question is, and it sort of looks like this bears that out and that a lot of your top third are in Tornado Alley. I guess I'm wondering if, if maybe the offices say in Tornado Alley are just attracting the better people. I would, I would see that if uh, this kind of scoring is the same for, let's say, what about winter storm warnings or other things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Otherwise, these, they're just, they're maybe just maybe these are just the best people in severe weather. Maybe these yeah. are thunderstorm freaks that, that migrate to planes off. Yeah. Have y'all looked at, you did strength of storm, strength of tornado. Have you d also looked at this with the tornadoes that have caused fatalities, like zero to one or very large no, fatalities? No. That's the area that, um, you know, based on the Simmons and Sutter thing, I want, I want to look at because I think that's quite a, a startling out conclusion they came to. Uh, so I say that, that would, if that were true, and the FAR was really, and again, I, it's, it, that one's hard for me to buy into yet, but that's what they published. And so they say that there was a, it's a, it's a strong, now they, they have something about like recent, um, recent inc rapid increase in the FAR leads to this. So there's some temporal aspect to it. So, so whereas I'm just looking at FAR over this long period, so I don't know. But, but if that were true, then you could say, well, there's a lot, and now it's starting to get re, you know, really important because it's that the FAR is a good indicator, which that has been debated for a long time, uh, and that it, it has this impact on, on society of such a nature. So I, I want to look at that now. 